What's up all you beautiful, gorgeous, sexy people out there? Welcome back to my GM in NBA 2K14 with the Utah Jazz. That's right, the Utah Jazz. And today, we're facing off against the Denver Nuggets. So right off the bat, we're going to drive down with Burke. We're going to pass it off to Favors. He's going to 360 and dunk it. So guys, last week as a quick little short recap, we beat the Milwaukee Bucks at the last second. We had a last second buck a paint stuff from Roy Hibbert. We unleashed the Kraken. I think it was on Monte Ellis to win the game. 107-105. We got that W. You. And on the season, we're about 500, 15 and 15, something like that. As I said before, guys, I'm not going to show every game. I'm just going to show like every fourth game or something like that, just to give a random sampling of the season. And then when it comes to playoff, play the playoffs, I'll give you guys every single game that I can, just to make it more interesting, just to make the season go by faster. It'd be boring just to watch 82 games. I wouldn't even do that in real life. So why would I make you guys watch every single game? But guys, so far this season, we've been pretty decent. We can still improve, and that is what's going to bring me into my next next topic. I'm trying to save the trade talk for later on down the road, but one of you guys, Teddy, commented on my last video. I'm going to put that comment down below. He's talking about trying to get Boris D out, and that's, you know, that's because of the NBA playoffs going on right now. Boris Diaw is a monster. He's been doing beastie. He's, I think he had 26 points one game the last series against the Thunder. So he's actually what I want. He would be someone that can spread the floor, that can come off the bench, that can shoot threes and be a big man, be a presence down low. But most importantly, he can spread the floor for us and he can come in off the bench. That would be a great asset to our team. That would be someone that we can switch in, maybe run the five or just run the four and run that small lineup that can spread the floor and still be big-ish maybe. But guys, we'll think about that later on down the road. I'm still improving, still getting this team ready for the playoffs. And once I get into the, uh, the All-Star Weekend, then we're going to make a trade. Then we're going to make a move. Then we're going to get something going to better position ourselves for the all-star break after the all-star break and now let's get into this let's get into denver you see right now i'm down by six it's time for me to come back it's time for me to make a comeback but you'll see here eventually in the second quarter things go haywire this is what's been happening to me like the past four weeks honestly or the past like four games i've been playing i get i get it down to the wire and all of a sudden i screw something up or I miss shots and all that. You'll see here, he hits the little floater. Nate Robinson hits the little floater off the backboard and into the uh, the basket. So, 23-18. I'm driving down the court with Garrett. I'm throwing up with my ball, man. Richard Jefferson. And he's going to hit that layup. And I'm going to come back. I'm going to try to hit three. But there's the rebound. And now they're on the breakaway. Stop that, dude. Stop that, yo. Whatever your name is. You have a weird name, dude. I'm going to change that. So, you see Lawson at the top of the key. He's going to try to drive on me. I have great defense, and he just passes it around me. But I get the block. I stuff him. I say no. And then Richard Jefferson's going to come back and nail the three. He hits the J from three-point land. You don't want none, son. So, he comes back again with a longer three, and he nails it. He drops a bomb. It's like a B-52 out there, dropping bombs. And then you see right here, this is where I screw up. Ray, or, um, Favors was out of bounds. Like, come on, Favors, get in bounds. Stop being a tool. Catch the ball, dude. This isn't football, Butterfingers. The basketball's too big. Do I have to hit you in the dang face, Gordon? And you see, look, he drops the ball. I block him. He gets the ball back, and it just makes it easier for him. Three possessions in a row where I could have stopped him, where I should have gotten the bucket or something, but I come back and I slam them cookies. I come a hawk jam it. I slam it down. I get everything going the way I wanted to after a horrible, horrible possessions. But you see here, I'm down by four. I get the rebound. So I get the rebound and I pass it right back to them. That's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. He misses the dunk, but someone or he misses the shot and someone comes out from their team and dunks it in. So get juked out of your shoes, Ty Lawson. Sit down, get out of your shoes. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Oh, oopty oops, you just got oopty oops, son. You got juked out of your shoes. Sit down. So guys, you see I'm still down by four. Later on in the quarter, Ty Lawson's coming around the key and he hits Nate Robinson. 
403. And you cannot leave that little midget open. You can't leave that little leprechaun open or you're going to be screwed because he will nail threes all day, every day. And they come back with a quick little basket. So we're down by two. It's almost halftime. Lawson's at the top of the key again. He's driving to the basket. He's going to hit that layup. He's going to get two points. And now there's, we're still down by two, but there's 24 seconds left. And they alley-oop it on me. Kenneth Fareed alley-oops it on me. He slams it down. There's an earthquake. There's everything. We just got screwed over. It was like forest fires up in this. Only you can prevent forest fires. And I didn't that time. But I nailed the three. So we're down by one going into halftime. We cut down their lead. They were up by six earlier. And now they're just down by one. So we're making it again. We're making it something to where we can handle. Something to where we can come back from and get things going. Nate Robinson's just going to drive it all over the place. And he's going to... Pass the ball through my five hole. I believe that just went through my legs. What kind of crap is this? Dude, what is this? First I'm missing passes, and now he's passing it through my legs in order to get a bucket. So he comes back, they get the easy layup. 60 to 58 right now. I tip the ball. Hibbert's going to come up with it. I'm going to pass it to Burke, and now I'm trying to push the court. Push it up the court, and I get the layup. Hells yeah. So I come back. My bald man's going to drop another bomb. He's like a B-52. We're up by three. But they'll respond and hit a three. Or actually, that was two. Oh, my bad. His foot must have been on the line. So I have a bad pass there. And then they're going to get another layup. So you can see the direction this game's going. Right off the bat, I had those three quick turnovers in the second quarter. And then now I'm just turning the ball over, over, and over again. But I'm still coming up with blocks because I have the Twin Towers down low. I have my big man. And sit down, Kenneth Fareed. Get out of here. You suck, dude. Yeah. Yeah, my man from Michigan just ran you over. How's that feel? How's that feel? Like a six-foot little dude ran over a seven-foot Kenneth Fareed. <laughs> I'm going to come over to the basket, hit that with favors. So, you know, we're up by one now. We came back, we took the lead, and now I'm going to give it to Hibbert. I'm going to work that big old birdie, that junk in the trunk, that semi of a butt. And he's going to come back, hit the hook shot. So now we're up by three. One minute left in the third quarter, and he's going to hit the runner or a running hook. And then they're going to cut the lead down to one. So it's a battle. It's a slug fest. It's like a boxing match out here. And then I'm going to come back with Lucas. And he's going to nail the three. He's going to drop a bomb. Boom. <laughs> so you see we got a nice lead here. It's 81-75. We took a decent lead going into the fourth quarter. But all hell is going to break loose. It always does when I'm on this team. Typically. But I come back with Hibbert. He hits a little fadeaway. So we push the lead. And you see right here, right now, they came back 84, 83. We're up by like seven. But they came back. And then Hibbert's going to hit something that's not typically he's not typically used to. He's not used to hitting that jump shot. He would break his ankles if he was Greg Owen. Like he jumps up even like an inch off the ground. He'd break those legs. He'd break an ankle or something. So Kenneth Reed has the ball. He's beasting on me. He's beasting. He's feasting. He's annihilating me. And now they have the lead. 91 to 90. And he's going to dump them cookies. He got an alley-oop. Another alley-oop. Whip. Slam dunk. <laughs> so, guys, they're up 96 to 92. I'm trying to make a comeback. I come back with Gordon. He's going to nail the three-pointer. He's going to drop a bomb. He wanted to get in on this action. Favors is going to come up with a steal. And then my big boys are running down the court. And he slams them cookies. <laughs> Little Hibbert wants some cookies. And he slams it down. Baby. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so we took the lead, 97 to 96. And right down, right into the last minute, it becomes a slugfest. It becomes give it to the big man, let the big man make the moves, and see if we can take the lead and just keep them away. Keep them, stop them on defense, keep them out of the basket. But they come up and nail a three. And it's 104, 101, and look what happens next. You ready? Watch the score. 111 to 103. I can't make any shot like this. That's a tough one there because he's wide open. That's a shot he expects to make. Brooks outside. So the Nuggets win it. Both teams played well, but these guys had the edge. Yeah, I think so. They were just staking 